نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له. نشهد انه لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه صلى الله عليه وعلى اهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. وعلى صحابته الكرام ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين. اوصيكم واوصي نفسي بتقوى الله يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا. اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says Verily, you have an excellent example for those who believe in Allah in the last day in the Messenger Muhammad Uswatun Hasan liman kana yarju Allah wa yarba Whoever seeks Allah whoever is inside of himself at any moment seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking to be close to God you have an example in your Prophet, peace be upon Our Prophet وسلم, is an example from the childhood until death. And from him, around him, are his companions who are also examples. And amongst the women are his daughters, the female companions, and the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, who are also companions, who are also uh, examples for the women. The Prophet <coughs> When he was a child, was exemplary in his childhood. It is recorded that he used to be found when he was lost, and then he would be found sitting on a hilltop, contemplating, just sitting and contemplating. Even children, so as a child, he would just be contemplating, and then they would bring him down. As a child, when he played, he played games and never was it recorded that he gave, played games that hurt other children. When he wrestled, he wrestled until, so such that no one was hurt. When they played with stones, such that no one was hurt. As a child, the Prophet, peace be upon him, Prophet, peace be upon him, was exemplary in his manners with his parents. Prophet, peace be upon him, lived with Halima, a Sa'diya, for most of his infant and toddler years. And there, as we hold, the angel Jibreel came and removed the black spot from his heart. The black spot that is in the heart of every human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created people with a pure heart, but put in it a black spot. And that black spot is attracted to everything wicked and evil. That black spot is attracted to lowly things to harming other people. It enjoys watching the fall and the collapse of others. That's the black spot within the heart of a human being. And it is upon us to push it away, to clean it away. If you respond and do a sin, and you do wrong, that black spot grows. If you respond, it grows. If you ignore it and push it away, and do the good, it shrinks. But for the Prophet, he's the example, it was removed completely. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is an example in his youth. As a young man, the Prophet ﷺ lived with his uncle Abu Talib. His mother had died and his father had died. Abu Talib, although he was the chief of the clan and the chief of the town, he had come across some hard times. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was not a materialistic youth. He worked. This is an example for all of our youth. Our young people, particularly in this day and age, when economics is always uncertain, the young people should follow the example of the Prophet. They should work in helping their parents. The Prophet worked as a shepherd, and he would give his sum of money to Abu Talib. At the end of every day, Abu Talib would give him a part of himself. He worked as a shepherd. Then, many people don't know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, sought the hand 
of Fafida, the daughter of Abu Talib. He sought the hand of Fafida, who we know later in the seerah as Um Hani. And Fafida was a beautiful young woman, considered the most beautiful woman in Mecca at the time. And the daughter of Abu Talib, and the Prophet was living with them. But Abu Talib saw that the Prophet has no money. How is he going to have uh, his daughter live with a man who has no money? She, he said, we married from such and such a clan, so our daughters as well will marry from that clan. So she is already engaged to such and such a person from another tribe. And the Prophet was very disheartened, very disappointed. But what did he do? Did he go and say he's a victim, victimize himself? No. He changed his own circumstance. How did he change his own circumstance? When he saw that it was his poverty, his impoverishment, that caused him to miss this opportunity. If you look at the seerah, what did the Prophet do next? He got a better employment. He worked for Khadija as a merchant. And Khadija saw in him attributes as well that are examples for us. She saw in him that he doesn't take sides in anything. This is the chief feature that she saw in him that was unlike everyone else. Everyone takes one extreme or the other. But whenever there was a dispute or a disparity, the messenger, peace be upon him, never took sides. Also she saw he never raised his voice. And also she saw he doesn't do what all the other young men do. One time the Prophet, peace be upon him, was invited to a party. And this party, of course, naturally would probably have had drinking, dancing, and whatnot. And he accepted to go, but he didn't know what was there. Allah knew what was there. And Allah subhanahu wa caused him to fall asleep before he could ever go to such a party. So he was a, a man who was early riser and early to bed, meaning that he was a man of responsibility. Our youth should take an example from this. The young people, when we say about the Prophet, peace be upon him at this time, we're only talking about 20 years old. But he's a man of responsibility. And we should be training our youth. Don't just be sitting, uh, uh, taking from your father's paycheck or allowances through college. No, there should be some type of effort put forth. This is the example of our Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then went and traveled to do trade and Maysara was a servant that was with him, noticed wherever the Prophet went, he was covered by a cloud. And he reported this to Khadija. And there was a Christian monk by the name of Nestor there. And this Christian monk also noticed something special about this person. And he noticed, and he talked to him. And when he talked to Maysara, they both came to an agreement that there's something special about this Prophet. Nestor was a monk in the very same place as Bahira, and they recognized in their holy books that this was a time for a prophet, and that he would come from the peninsula of the Arabs. And so many of the early, the early Christian monks recognized the prophecy of our prophet, so I said, beforehand. Mesa went back to Khadija, radiallahu anha, and she said, this man, and he said, he is not a normal person. Keep an eye out for him. Khadija, what did she do? She went to her uncle, or her relative, Waraka. Waraka was also a Christian monk, an Arab who had become a Christian and studied the, 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 te the texts that were handed down. And he said, yes, verily this, our text show that this is the time that a prophet will rise. But he will rise in this city, but he will be kicked out of this city. And verily this is what happened. The prophet was born in Mecca, the message was delivered to Mecca, and he was removed to Medina. Many of the Christian monks along this area, they recognized this. They had it in their scriptures. Where those scriptures are today, Allah knows best. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, in marriage as well, is an example. When he married, he married Khadija. She was 15 years older than him, 40 years old, and he was 25. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, in his example in marriage, didn't marry simply for uh, uh, didn't marry simply for the physical relations that he wanted, 
he married someone who as well was mature like him. And he married to Allah when Khadija was 40, he married her and continued to work as her employee. This is the humility of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Many people today, when they look at a Muslim male, they see some macho character. Well, take a look at an example of the humility of your Messenger Sallallahu His employee was his wife. SubhanAllah. This is the humility the Prophet, peace be upon him, had. The Prophet then had six children with her. Qasim, Ruqayya, Umm Kalthum, Zainab, Fatima, and Abdullah. And the, uh, a gift was given to the Prophet of Zayd. That's seven. Qasim and Abdullah, the, the infants, the two male infants, died. The Prophet, peace be upon him, later made a statement. He later had a third boy, and that boy died. Why? Because prophecy goes through the lineage. And he said, if I was to have another boy, it would be a prophet. Don't you see that all the Hebrew prophets, they're all sons of each other? David, son of Solomon. Jesus, from the lineage of David. Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq, Ishaq, Yaqub, Yaqub, Yusuf, four fathers, four grand, uh, children down. You have the prophet Ayyub, who is a descendant of the prophet Yusuf, four generations down, according to one narration. The Turks have another one. The Turks say he was from Anatolia. That prophecy, the sons of the prophet all died so that there would be no other prophet. So he had four daughters plus Zayd, and then he took in Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Prophet looked out for the poor. He took in his nephew Ali ibn Abi Talib. And so their household was now six. Then there was another one, which was the Prophet's former servant, Barakah. She married and divorced, and she was fell on hard times, so she came into the household. Ultimately, there were seven in the household. Umm Ayman and Zayd being the eldest. Then Ruqayyah, Zainab, uh, Ruqayyah, Umm Kalthum, Zainab. Then Ali, then Fatima. That's their order in age. And so the Prophet had a full house. Our religion is not a religion of being monks. The Prophet, Allah subhanahu he gave our messenger a full house. Family and non-family living in the same house. On top of this, there were other sons from Khadija. Khadija had children from her other marriages. Khadija had two husbands before this. One died, she married again, he died. She had children. The Prophet had to interact with them. What is the purpose of this? If he's going to be a prophet and teach people how to live, he needs, Allah gave him a full life so that he could live. He gave Muhammad a full life. So when he comes time that he's going to establish a new society, a new way of living, he knows what life is. And for this reason, we are further encouraged to live like the Prophet lived, having a full life, working, marrying, having children, and even embracing people from outside of our homes. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him in the Quran, you have presided a year, you have, a, you have just presided a lifetime before this message. He lived 40 years before... <coughs> before ever preaching. Forty years <coughs> before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the message. That means he knows what life is. He traded, he bought and sold, he was turned down, he faced hard times, good times, married. <coughs> All of this before receiving Nathan, before receiving the first message. Prophet, peace be upon him, finally attained wealth. And so our Messenger Sallallahu lived and experienced poverty and wealth. He experienced poverty and he experienced wealth and a range of in between. And finally, when, Z when uh, Umm Ayman and Zayd married and left the house. And Umm Kathum and Ruqayya married or were betrothed and were soon to leave the house, or had already left the house. And remaining with them were only Fatima, 
Uh, Zainab as well married Abu al-As and left the house. Who remaining in the household only was Ali, Fatima, and that's it. Two children left in the house. At this point, the Prophet, peace be upon him, his life became calm from worldly matters. When it became calm from worldly matters, we see what we are supposed to be like when things in life settle down. What did the Prophet do? He lived a meditative life. He would go on retreat. And this is going to happen to all of us. Some people it happens earlier. Some people it's already happening. Your children are leaving the house. Your home is becoming an empty nest again. What is our guidance when the home becomes an empty nest again? Look at the Prophet. He's spending his time in worship. This is even before the revelation comes. He's following the Hanif way and going to the mountain and meditating there. Just contemplating whatever thing he knew, he practiced. He gave charity to anyone passing by. Until finally the revelation came. And when the revelation came, then a new life was, was given to the Prophet. But what we see just from his first 40 years, from the first 40 years, we see an example. We see an example that can be followed. And this is oftentimes taken lightly. We say, oh, the prophecy came when he was 40. We look at the last 23 years. How about the first 40? Is not an example as well? It's an example. And in, in fiqh, when we, it is an example. Everything regarding it, regarding morals and akhlaq and adab. Morals and akhlaq and adab and not fatwa and fiqh and akhlaq because there was nothing there. When it comes to just taking wisdom of how the Prophet lived, don't just skip over the first 40 years. Why? When Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, his best friend, said to him, I've traveled, I've seen how people act in the Sassanid Empire and the Byzantine Empire. And I've come, and, and we know that, that I know that you've never been to those places or you've never sat with those people. Where did you learn such manners? Where did you learn this etiquette? He said, my Lord taught me manners and did an excellent job. He gave me perfect manners. The manners of the Prophet, peace be upon him, even before revelation are examples. If it wasn't an example, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would be false what Allah is saying, that we gave you a lifetime so you could see that he's trustworthy, he's upright, his manners are perfect. And so the example of the Prophet, peace be upon him, doesn't begin at Ibrah, peace be upon because the Khalq begins from his birth. So the law will come to have stuff.
She didn't find him, she fell asleep on the road. In any society, fall at any time, falling asleep on the road, extremely dangerous. On top of that, this is the wife of a prophet. Can't be seen sleeping on the road. The prophet, peace be upon him, came back and found her asleep on the road. It was very upset. Told her, didn't I tell you, don't come out? Didn't I tell you, stay home? She fell asleep on the road. She had nothing to say. The prophet, peace be upon him. But she, as she narrates the story, she says the prophet was very upset, but he never brought it up again. He never brought up the issue again. This is a matter that we should take. When something wrong happens, we don't bring it up again. And especially, this is a flop. Brothers can have, sisters can have as well. How many times a brother, husband and wife have a dispute? All of a sudden, you rewound to 1980. All of a sudden, right? You don't know, you didn't know she had such a good memory. All of a sudden, you got issues now, she's, she's rewound. This is not a good habit. Oh, you remember when you did this and all of a sudden rewinding back to 1983? Oh, remember when we were at the pit stop in Colorado? What you said? Well, I didn't remember we took that vacation. Okay? Don't rewind. It's not the example of the prophet to rewind. So he would drop it. This is from forgiveness. Forgiveness is of a couple levels. The first level is that you just forgive something. The second level is you forgive it and you forget it. This is what Al-Afu, the name of Allah. Al-Afu means you forgive something, but you never bring it up again. You just completely forget it. You resume relations. Jazakallah. You re resume relations as if nothing happened. Ghufran, when you forgive someone, it's you forgive them, but you're going to tread a little softly next time. Because you know, no, we should be people of Afu. Because if you were, if we forgive people, Allah will forgive us. Allah will treat us in that manner. Allah, you know the Prophet, peace be upon him, as well, never lectured his children. The Prophet, peace be upon him, never lectured his children. He never sat down and gave them a lecture. Another thing he did, he never asked them, why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? He never asked them these questions. Why? He said, Omar explained it. He said, the instant you ask someone, why did you do this? Why didn't you do this? Or where were you? Or where are you going? He said, Shaitan will come and prepare a lie for them. You get them to lie. Rather, what the Prophet you would ask was, what caused you to do this? Or what called, what stopped you from doing this? Which means, oh, which means that something else must have caused you to do this, or something else must have stopped you from doing it. So this, uh, Take some example from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the month where we revive the Sirah. This is the month in which we are uh, recommended to reread the Sirah. It's uh, uh, whether whether it's books on tape or however you read it or listen to it. We bring back the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I apologize to you for not being in full force. Uh, just some sickness has come upon uh, most of the uh, a lot of people. It's going around, so be careful, inshallah, when it comes to. Uh, there's a lot of sickness going around. Uh, we have Rahel talk about it. It's almost like an epidemic. It's almost like a minor plague is going around. So just be careful. I apologize to you for sort of maybe putting you to sleep today because I was extremely exhausted from the sickness. Allah Mustaan. Allah Mahdiya Fi Man Hadayt. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide all the Muslim people. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide all people to the truth. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to guide all people to what is good. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to keep all people safe. Oh Allah, our world is, is plunged in tribulation. Save our world. Send us those who will save our world. Send, send us the teachings that will save our world. Our world is shootings and killings as a norm. Ask Allah to protect everyone here. <coughs> protect everyone here uh, and their families. <laughs> protect everyone here and their children. Ask Allah if you have children. I ask Allah for protect them in their schools, <laughs> in their school buses. Whether well, recently there was a school bus that was hijacked recently. Ask Allah to protect the guests that we have from from one of the local schools. Protect the, their school from any violence. Ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to protect all of you from sickness, from violence, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our marriages, make our marriages whole and complete and wholesome, make us uh, people of good attributes with our marriage.
Make us people of forgiveness in our marriage. Make us people of, of, of blind generosity in our marriage. Make us people who look the other way when we see what we don't like. As your prophet taught us, if you see something you don't like, think of what you do like in your spouse. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all happy in our marriages. Make us all good parents to our children. Allow us, Allah, give us the tawfiq, give us the, the grace and the tawfiq to be kind to our children. To be cool tempered when we raise up our children. To, to, to take out the time to play with them. To raise up good children so we don't end up with zombies as we're ending up. Uh, our world is filled with zombies. Spend time with our children. Allah give us the tawfiq to spend time with our children so we don't end up with another generation of, of video game playing, shooting zombies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, protect the future generations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify this land, make this land safe as it was. Safe again as it used to be. Make it prosperous again as it used to be. Because we live in it, our children are going to live in it. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to help all the Muslims wherever they are. In Syria, in Egypt, in Kashmir, in Bangladesh. In all the lands in which they are suffering. In Palestine. In Mal in Mali, where there's a civil war. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect those in Algeria where there is problems. There's problems everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look to look to all of us with the eye of mercy and know the situation that we're in. Forgive us of our wrongs. In the Layamur bil Adani wa Iksani wa Itaid al Qurba wa in Ani al Fahshari wa Munkari wa Bagi, Yahdu Kum Ala Kum Tadak Farun, Udkurullah Ali Gurku, Shkuru Ala Nabi Yazitku, Wa Ali Kulla Ali Kurullah Yahdu.